Let me tell you what it means to submit to the Holy Spirit. To submit your will, to submit your plans, to submit your ways, and to be willing to receive from Him, even if it is inconveniencing you. Welcome to Dynamics of YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be giving you a thoughtful revision on the podcast by Apostle Jesus Soma. So imagine your life taking a completely unexpected turn because of one divine directive. Submitting to the Holy Spirit means surrendering your plans, wills, and understanding to the guidance, even when it seems inconvenient or illogical. This podcast underscores the danger of carnal thinking and the deception of false spiritual guidance, emphasizing the importance of discernment and true submission. What if the very path you are resisting is the one that leads to your destiny? How can you distinguish between the good? How can you distinguish between God's guidance and deceptive influences? So all these questions are answered in this video. So make sure you watch from beginning to end and make sure to share this message. Thank you. Let me tell you what it means to submit to the Holy Spirit. To submit your will, to submit your plans, to submit your ways, and to be willing to receive from Him. Even if it is inconveniencing you, you trust the fact that he represents, he is the spirit of the father and that he has your best interest. It may not make sense, but somewhere along the journey after 10 years, you will see the wisdom of his leadership. Someone please listen to me because one of the ways carnal people get into trouble is judging 10 years using the myopic lens of today. God can look at you and tell you, join this chariot. It may not make sense till after 11 years. You will see why he brought you to that relationship. You will see why he brought you to Koinonia. The version of you that came may not make sense. God, what are you doing with me? And he says, you just be consistent. When he calls you to enter the ark, it's because the rain is coming. And just because the rain did not come for 120 years, be patient. When the rain comes, you will see the value of that wisdom. Are we together? Yes. Is the reason why the greatest way Satan deceives believers is to act as the Holy Spirit. Because he knows that believers have opened up themselves to be yielded. That is another discussion. Satan hardly attacks believers as Satan. He comes with the disguise of the Holy Spirit. Because he knows if he comes as Satan, you will cast him. So he will come as an angel of light. And suggest things using scripture. But you need a level of maturity to say no. Even though this sounds good, this is not the Holy Spirit. God does not lead this way. This is why you have to know the Holy Spirit before you submit to him. If you submit to any voice and any entity that is not just human, you will find out you have been submitting to many entities. And many believers, they think it's the Holy Spirit leading them. They would die believing it's the Holy Spirit leading them. But upon the lens of a spiritually matured person, you will see the gaps that this level of submission is to a demon spirit, not the Holy Spirit. Listen carefully. This is a deliverance service for someone now. There are people who have done stupid things in the name of being led by the Spirit. I will be showing you another element of being spiritual. Because if the only thing you do to be spiritual is submission to spirits, you are in trouble. I told you if Satan uses evil to destroy you and you resist it, he will use good. The most important thing is he wants you to be destroyed. So we have, respectfully speaking, we have an army of sincere people in the body of Christ doing all kinds of things. And the basis of their confidence, they will tell you, see my notebook, see it. God told me, I know what I saw. You are right. But we need to judge the kind of influence. And there is a way to judge spirits. This is why the Bible says strong meat. Let me leave that one. We're coming there. You see. That you can judge spirits. If you are open hearted tonight for someone. It can be a deliverance service now. To ask yourself this journey I'm taking. I don't see the light. And I'm not. I'm seeing everything around it. Is taking me backward. I'm going into a pit. Is this really the voice of God? And when you check, you will find out that you are being led by a demon spirit and you do not know. If Jesus had to pray for Peter and say Satan desired, did he come like a, a beast with horns? You think Peter would not have resisted him?
he slipped into Peter and used Peter's compassion. There are people who have left their place of glory and their place of assignment because they had a voice and the voice spoke beautifully. The voice came through a dream and said, go to this place. The voice came and turned their destiny helpers to look like demons and they got up from that dream hating the people who will bless them. Listen carefully, oh. This message is to bless you. We are talking about the spiritual man. That a spiritual man in addition to an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit must submit to the Lordship of the Spirit. Let me tell you one classic sign to know that is the Holy Spirit leading you. There is nothing he will ever tell you that will be by force. No. You will be constrained but the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of God will always respect the will factor. The greatest gift God gave man is salvation through Christ. And even that, he never forced it on any man. Anything that demands that you do it by force is not the Spirit of God. It is inconsistent with the nature of love. I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. I can only advise you choose life that's why the holy spirit is called a counselor are we listening now now with all due respect i know that i've read many books books i'm i'm, I'm one person who has had a rich heritage of a journey with the holy spirit by the grace of god and i've read books on revivals and i've seen in many writings where people say things like the Holy Spirit told them, if you don't do this, you will die. And I respect their level of revelation. But I can tell you by the authority of scripture, it's not accurate. God does not work like that. If God did not force you to receive him, the moment God puts pressure on you and takes away the will factor, it's no longer called obedience. It's called oppression. The basis of obedience is that your power to choose must remain. You cannot tell me to obey until you give me an option to disobey that's why there were two trees in the garden of eden not one tree is someone learning now this is one of the ways you judge spirits and also this is also one of the ways you judge prophecies anything that has to constrain you by force something is wrong no 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 give by force Go there by force. Uh -uh. That language of force is not a kingdom language. Not towards the saints. Towards demon spirits, yes sir. But not the saints. Is someone learning already? Not by force. So by the time somebody says, it's not that me too, it's not like I'm, God just forced me. Be careful. You are not bad, but just accept that you are still growing. When you grow, you will find out you have been blaming God. It's a lie. It's not God. Mm -mm. God constrains. He puts pressure within your heart. Either to go or to stay. But he will always leave the will factor. You can choose. I can choose as an act of my will today. As a man of God. And stand before you and stand before the whole world. And say you know what? I'm not interested in God again. It's an act of my will. You will intercede for me. But at the end of it. When you intercede for me. Let me tell you what happens. The Spirit of God will keep revealing to me the excellency of staying with Him and the disaster that may happen to those He has connected to my grace. But at the end of it, when He finds out I have made up my mind, He will honor my decision and raise another person. That's how God works. Are you learning the ways of God? Because there are many believers who do not submit to the Spirit of God. And the reason why they do not submit to the Spirit of God is that they are afraid. Here's what they are afraid of. I have arranged my life my own way. I have planned everything. From graduation is America. And when you are praying, what you are saying is God, you better make America work. Every time you pray that prayer, something in you and you say, I won't pray again. Because you are suspecting that if you actually submit to the Spirit of God. Let me teach you something. If you run life by your understanding, you will make many mistakes. 
if you run life, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And he says to lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, verse 6, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Someone say, direct me. Shout and say, guide me, O God. Ladies and gentlemen, the bit that God has done in this ministry today is from the foolishness of the guidance of the Spirit. There is nowhere written in the Bible that Koinonia will move from Zaria to Abuja. There is nowhere written in the Bible that Koinonia will be all over the globe. It's not written directly there. There is a mandate to reach the ends of the earth. But that bespoke direction plus the season that's the Holy Spirit for you. If you do not submit to the Holy Spirit, it will be like a man driving a beautiful car, but not holding the steering. And this steering of destiny is too complicated for you to hold it. You are too small. Your hand is too small. You will not even be able to turn it. And when you insist that I will hold it and run my life my own way, very soon you see another hand bigger than your own running you to a ditch. That's Satan for you. Are we together? Let me tell you the truth. Allow God lead you by his spirit. Trust his leadership. You submit to the Holy Spirit the same way you gave your life to Christ. That from this day, spirit of the living God, I trust you as the spirit of the father. And I submit to your leadership. I submit to your leadership to guide me, to speak to me, to help me. I am unable to make destiny work my own way. I've tried and tried and it does not work. You are the spirit that guided Jesus to completion of his assignment. Even Jesus himself. Needed to be guided by that same spirit. The spirit of God is an ancient spirit. He has worked with many men. You are not the first. When you invite him into your life, don't you think the Holy Spirit just comes uninvited and says, hold my hands, Jared. No, it doesn't work that way. That's a demon spirit. Even if it's after 10 years, he will stretch his hands and say, give me a chance to produce the glory of God out of your life. And you will argue and say, I don't, I, I, I want to do things my own way. After you go around and waste time and waste destiny, you still come back to the same point and you will see the loving spirit say i can make this journey easier for you for someone tonight you came to church and god is telling you this carnal approach to life using guesswork are we together oh this one this one abuja lagos abuja lagos let me count five one two three four five it's lagos you will ruin your life that way this kind of superstitious living. You cannot risk your life and the destinies of people just using intelligence. What if you know better and you find out you made a mistake? No. The Holy Spirit for you. Hmm. When he holds you, you will start one journey after another. It will not make sense. So when he starts, remember I told you, he would disrupt a lot of your plans. You will not even understand your own life yourself. The only thing is that you know he's leading me. But as he leads you, through all of that darkness, all of a sudden you will start seeing a ray of light. And that light, and through the foolishness of your submitting to him, it may take a few years, but you now begin to see the beauty and glory that comes out of your life. And people would turn and say, I used to know this sister. My God, we thought this sister was a total failure. Look what God has done. Look what God has made out of his life, out of her life. Let me speak to someone here before I continue. You have run your life your own way. Listen, you came to church because God is telling you this is the stubbornness that got your grandfather where he was. God gave him a chance, he rejected it. For some of us, God came to our parents and said, can I help you? You don't know the road. There used to be an old hymn we used to sing in a seminary. My God knows the way through the wilderness. He says, all I have to do is to follow. That you hold his hands 
and say, Spirit of God, the world is too wicked, too complicated, too deceptive. I don't even know who is sincere and who is not, but I can trust you. I can trust you. What's that song? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct and He shall direct your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct and he shall direct your honestly i want you to believe that the holy spirit is a master at navigating destiny he knows the mountains. He knows the valleys. You see, because in this journey of destiny, you can be looking at a hole and not know it is a hole. It's only when your eyes tells you it's a hole and you will see beautiful lush gardens and quickly get there and find yourself in a hole that if you are not careful, you may never come out of. There are many people who have entered pits in destiny pits in ministry, pits in family. Only God can bring them out because they have decided that they will stubbornly run their lives by themselves. God is speaking to someone. Trust God with your life. You have trusted people and things of lesser value. You carried your whole life and gave them. Help me. You are the mighty God. And you you are the glory of God. You are the mighty God. You are the glory of God. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. You are the glory of God. ministering to you. Dave, can you sing for me that song, Spirit Lead Me? Find a convenient key and sing it. I want Spirit you to listen. Lead me where my trust is without borders. Listen. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my spiritual man is beyond a church goer the spiritual man is beyond a tongue talker the spiritual man is beyond a routine prayer practitioner a spiritual man 
is beyond a fasting person. Now, at the core of the journey to true spirituality is number one, a genuine encounter with the Son of the Living God. Number two, an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number three, a thorough comprehension of the ways of God, the mysteries of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom, and that by the scripture. Number four, listen carefully, submission. Submission is different from encounter. There are many people who can write books about the Holy Spirit, but it is clear from their lives that they do not want the inconvenience of submission to the governing authority of the Spirit of God as an act of faith, as an act of trust. Number five, the fifth factor that defines spirituality, write this down please, is submission to transformation by the Word of God. Again, just like submission to the Holy Spirit, just because you have access to the mysteries of the kingdom, that is knowledge. It does not mean you have chosen to submit to transformation. Number five is one of the cardinal pillars that transits a man from carnality to spirituality. A carnal man is a carnal man because he is carnally minded. A spiritual man is a spiritual man because he is spiritually minded. Any other factor that holds minus mentality cannot leave someone a spiritual person. There are many people bragging about spirituality, but from the lens of scripture I submit to you, they are not spiritual men. No. Transformation. Submit to transformation. This is the fifth you are willing to submit to transformation by the word of God. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech thee, brethren, by the message of God, that ye offer, present your bodies unto God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship. Verse 2. It says, and be not conformed to this world. The thinking pattern that comes with this system, he says, but be ye transformed. Here it is. By the renewal of your mind, that by your transformation you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Permit, allow, do not restrict, do not restrain this mentality from being in you which was also in Christ Jesus true spirituality is not just about activities true spirituality is seen in the extent of your submission for transformation to a point where you are changed in experience there are many people who pray but have refused to change did you hear what I said because prayer is supposed to lead to change but they have refused to change. Many people study the scripture and quote scripture, but they have not submitted to transformation. Many people fast and keep fasting, but they have not submitted to transformation. Many people come to church. They can quote everything they have learned from everywhere, but they have not submitted to change. Can I tell you, you cannot be a, spiritually, a, a spiritual man with a carnal mind. It doesn't work that way. It is that transition from carnal thinking to true spirituality. And the Bible says the reward you get is life and peace. Submission to the word of God. Submission to transformation. That the word of God, like the spirit of God, becomes final authority over your life. You have been indoctrinated by the value system of the kingdom. Are we together? I have taught you that one of the ways you test transformation is that it becomes difficult for people to connect you to any region within the earth. 
It's difficult for them to say you are Yoruba or Hausa or Igbo, maybe by your accent or by your look, that's fine. But by behavior, no. Your behavior is so transitioned, it betrays where you are coming from. You can't see someone and say, you are behaving like them. Where are you from? Uh -huh. It's all these people, that's how they behave. No, that means you've not grown. Because the kingdom of God has its culture too. And when you submit to the word of God, something begins to happen to you. You see that? He won't stop, he won't stop. Till my life looks like him. He won't stop, he won't stop. Till my mind looks like him. He won't stop, he won't stop. Till my destiny looks like him. See, when you know this, you will not only get born again and keep bragging I've been a Christian for 10 years and make a mockery of your Christian experience. The next thing to ask yourself is whose mindset am I representing? Whose mindset have I embraced? Stumbling blocks that will not allow you to be a representation of the image of Christ in experience. Are we together? Submission to transformation. This is what is happening to you. That's why I salute you and I take your coming every week. Not just as a, I don't have a membership mentality as a man of God. I'm too serious to be thinking membership. No. You are beyond members. This is God's, God's vessel, God's ship on a project towards transformation. Is the reason why I take my work very seriously. You see that? Because every time we have the opportunity to meet, whether to meet virtually or to meet here, is the business of transformation. I know that if you are not transformed, the reality of the Christ life will not be manifest in you. And this is what has plagued many people. Some of you are here and you are wondering why the promises of God cannot find expression. There is a kind of believer that can capture the promises of God in your life in experience. And if you don't transition, do you know, for instance, and I will wrap up with that, the believer who cannot give up anger, look up please, anger alone, just let's use one fleshly attribute of anger, that you cannot die to anger by the spirit. Anger alone can wreck all your relationships and destroy your destiny forever. Are we together? How about lost? Not just lost in terms of immoral behavior. Lost for things, money. It can relocate you out of the will of God. Send wrong people to your life. You see that now. I hope you are listening to what I'm telling you. Just one fleshly attribute is like a virus that can enter your system and wreck you into pieces wreck you into pieces i love god oh but let me tell you me my own kind of pastor is when i'm angry i will come down to the member and beat the person and come up you see don't celebrate bad things change whether you're a man of god whether you're a member if you find out something in you is not good don't justify it because a man of god is still a student change justify it I won't go back can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me I won't go back can't go back to the way Hallelujah.